A Thread by the Ghost of Daniel Parker, published 12.40 p.m., August 21st, 2019, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, the McCain Republicans. What did they know, and when did they know it? Part one, Bill Crystal tweets, I am a McCain Republican. The thread begins. The Washington Free Beacon, WFB, is the website that first contracted Fusion GPS in September or October 2015 to conduct oppo research on Donald Trump. In the words of Fusion's founder, Glenn Simpson, his investigation was an open-ended look at Donald Trump's business career and his litigation history and his relationships with questionable people. The law firm, Perkins Coie, representing the Clinton campaign and the DNC, contracted Simpson to continue his investigation into Donald Trump in April 2016. Now, we know that the Free Beacon had no knowledge of Christopher Steele and the Steele dossier. Wait, how do we know that? Because the publication's editor-in-chief, Matthew Continetti, and chairman, Michael Goldfarb, told us in a press release, in Byron York's article that broke the story of the Washington Free Beacon, Initialing funding the, initially funding the project, he writes that Russia was not a subject of the research per his sources. However, that claim is curiously missing from the Free Beacon's press release. Three days earlier, the Washington Free Beacon published a story about the revelation that the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC funded the research behind the Steele dossier. The article states that prior to April 2016, an unknown GOP client funded the research. Unknown GOP client? Hello? The Washington Free Beacon funded the initial research. The article is a significant breach of journalistic ethics. It also established an early pattern of deflecting from the Washington Free Beacon's role in the creation of the Steele dossier. So, who are the people behind the Washington Free Beacon? The WFB was established in 2012 by the conservative advocacy group Center for American Freedom, CAF. The center does not reveal the identity of its donors. On the board of the CAP is the ubiquitous Bill Crystal. I don't believe there's any need to waste time on Crystal's credibility. He has none. It's truly amazing that a man known as the architect of the Iraq war is still taken seriously by anyone but Alas, Bill has friends in high places, so we're stuck with him. One of his rich friends is billionaire hedge fund manager and GOP mega donor Paul Singer. Singer is the primary financial backer of the WFB. Investigative journalist Greg Palast, a dyed in the wool leftist, writes that progressives shouldn't rejoice over the use of the Steele dossier by the FBI because Singer has a dossier on him. The collection and dissemination of salacious and unverifiable information is his modus operandi. Palast claims that Singer has used dirty dossiers against leaders all over the world. In 2015 and 2016, Singer employed the tactic in the United States presidential race. The Free Beacon's editor-in-chief is Matthew Continetti, who also happens to be Bill Crystal's son-in-law. 
In addition to a couple of published books, Continetti's work has appeared in numerous newspapers. He's a regular contributor to establishment conservative publications, including the Weekly Standard and National Review. Of importance for this discussion is an article that appeared in National Review on October 10th, 2015. The publication date falls within the same time frame when the Washington Free Beacon first contracted Fusion GPS. From nationalreview.com, how to confront Vladimir Putin, link in the thread. In his opening paragraph, Continetti leaves the reader no doubt where he stands on Vladimir Putin. Quote, from Sweden in the Baltic to Tartus in the Mediterranean, Russian forces are on the offensive. The consensus among U.S. officials not beholden to the White House is that Mitt Romney was what was right. Vladimir Putin's Russia is the most dangerous threat to America. Continetti believes that U.S. foreign policy toward Russia is an utter failure. Time to get tough. Quote, the time has come for a revised strategy toward Russia, the greatest military and ideological threat to the United States and to the world order it has built over decades as guarantor of international security. End quote. Whatever we do, don't negotiate. Only losers make deals. Quote, it is the weaker party that seeks negotiations. End quote. Continetti tells the right to save talk of balanced budgets for peacetime. What he doesn't say is that neocon foreign policy advocates perpetual war, so those balanced budgets are never coming. Quote, what the right needs to understand is that deficit reduction and balanced budgets are worthy goals in a time of peace, and peacetime this is not. <laughs> End quote. Just in case there's any doubt in your minds, Continetti once again tells us that Putin is bad. Quote, it takes a set of moral blinders the size of the president's ego not to recognize today's Russia as America's enemy. As America has waned, Putin has waxed. And so, for America to wax, Putin must wane. End quote. Continetti urges America to arm Putin's enemies, to include ISIS, I think. We must arm his enemies, end quote. Ah, this part sure sounds familiar. Quote, the Kremlin spends hundreds of millions of dollars each year on a global propaganda network that spreads conspiracy theories, distorts reality, and incites suspicion and hatred of the United States and its representative democracy, end quote. And Continetti finishes strong. He's ready to throw down with Vlad. Quote, Putin, he is one bad guy. So let's take off our gloves. End quote. Matthew Continetti is the editor-in-chief of the Washington Free Beacon, where this column first appeared. Copyright 2015, all rights reserved. Continetti was awfully passionate about Putin in October 2015. Are we to believe he was not interested in oppo research about Trump's ties to Russia? Now, let's meet the co-founder and chairman of the Washington Free Beacon political hatchet man, Michael Goldfarb. Goldfarb got his start in the world of political skullduggery at Bill Crystal's The Project for the New American Century, PNAC, and the Weekly Standard. In 2008, Goldfarb was named Deputy Communications Director for the McCain presidential campaign. He joined forces with swampy Randy Scheunemann, <clears throat> to create the lobbying firm Orion Strategies. The firm lobbied for Georgia in 2008. Quote, McCain's top foreign policy advisor, Randy Scheunemann, was a partner in a two-man firm that served as a paid lobbyist for the Georgian government. Okay, Georgia as in the Baltic state. The Koch brothers hired Goldfarb to help improve their image. Apparently, the way he went about it was to intimidate and harass journalists who wrote negative stories about them. 
Li Fang tweeted, after Goldfarb was hired by Coke Industries as a consultant to hit critics, Free Beacon obsessively harassed me over any Coke piece I wrote. Goldfarb was a key player in the Bill Crystal-led attempt to defeat the nomination of Chuck Hagel for Secretary of Defense in 2012. Good article to learn how the McCain Republicans conduct a smear campaign from Slate.com. Why William Crystal's campaign against Chuck Hagel was so effective. One conservative journalist called him the shadiest person on the right. <laughs> That's quite a statement, considering some of the grifters and fake news pushers on the right. Now that we have an idea of the character of the people behind the Washington Free Beacon, in the next part, we'll take a closer look at the timeline. Let's check out part two while I scroll way back here. If you guys see a faster way for me to do this, let me know. And there we go. Part two. Oh, 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 hang on. Almost there. <laughs> huh. All right, I'll worry about part two for another video. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next one.